Ivan, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks, Mike. Uh, can you explain the room concept, please? So here's the idea. This is from a book I wrote called Who's in Your Room? Imagine you live your life in one room and that one room has one door and that one door is an enter only door so that when people come into your room or into your life, they're there forever. You can never get them out. Now, luckily, this is a metaphor, but if it were true, Mike, would you be more selective about the people that you've let into your life? Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Uh, and so I tell people uh, that you need to be selective. And they say, well, you know what? The truth is I can get people out of my life. Well, let's let's talk about that for a moment. So what I want you to do, if you're, if you're watching this, um, Mike, I want you to think of someone that was maybe toxic or difficult and you got them out of your life, okay? I want you to think about why you wanted them out of your life. Now, I'm not gonna ask you who it is, Mike, but do you have somebody in mind? I'm not gonna ask you who. All right, I want you to think about what it was they did that really annoyed you or was problematic for you. Yes. You, have, do you, are you, you got something? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the deal. If they're still in your head, they're still in your room and they will be there for the rest of your life. One of the people we interviewed was Dr. Daniel Amen, who's a psychiatrist and neuroscientist. And he, he said, uh, you know, many, any of the relationships that you've had in life, that um, those relationships, professional or personal, those people's fingerprints are all over your brain and they will be there forever. And that's the concept of the room, is that people who enter your life are there forever, either either physically or at least emotionally and mentally, they are there forever. And so the concept of the room is basically the room begins here and ends here. It's, it's, it's your mind. And so it's all about learning how to be more selective about bringing people into your life. Do other people really have that much power in determining your happiness though? Yeah, because I think we let them, um, but we don't have to let them. Mm. Even the people that are still in our life, I mean, for example, family members or people that we work with uh, where you can't really get them out of your life and they're still in your room. So they may be in your room, but their baggage doesn't have to be. You can uh, create an, a, a, an environment in your life where uh, people may be in it, but they, they, they don't have to bring that baggage into your life. What's the first step then, becoming maybe this doorman? And why is, it, why is uh, maybe determining your own values a, a prerequisite? Yeah, so the values are the prerequisite. That's what you gotta begin with. Mm. Uh, and when, when I talk about values to people, and I'll, I'll, I'll be talking maybe to an individual, and I'll say, give me your top seven values, personal, personal values. And Mike, it's like, it's like a deer in the headlights. They're like, what? Give me your top seven personal values. And I'm like, uh, um, um, honesty. Great. Give me six more. People are clueless as to what their values are. Mm. Well, you can't know what kind of room to create, to curate, what kind of life to curate if you don't know your values. So you got to get good with your values. You have to know what they are. And so one of the first things we talk about in the book is how do you determine your values and how do you then apply those values to your room? You apply them with the doorman. You go out and you hire a doorman. Okay, not a real doorman. You don't have to actually have to hire somebody. And by the way, call it whatever you want. You can call it a bouncer, a guardian. If you're in California, you can call it a door person, whatever you want to call it. We chose to call it a doorman. Mm -hmm. And the doorman is your conscious and subconscious mind. Mm. And that doorman screens people from gaining entry into your room. Well, what do they screen based on? They have to screen based on your values. So if you don't know your values, your doorman can't screen people to get the appropriate people into your life. So here's an easy technique, and I am gonna ask you to share this one, Mike. Uh -oh. Here's an easy, yeah, it'll be easy. Here's an easy technique to start with before you even begin with values, because people struggle with what their values are. But most people have no problem with deal breakers. 
what is, and I'm going to ask you in a moment, what's your deal breaker? What is it, some behavior that someone might have that is an absolute deal breaker? I do not want them in my life when they behave like this. For me, it was drama. Mm. People who are dripping in drama. We all have drama. I got a little drama. We all have drama. But I'm talking people that you're dripping in drama. Everything is drama. And I just realized, I came to the realization that those people just drive me crazy. And that's not a value that is congruent with mine. And, um, and, and the problem was I had multiple people who were in my room that were full of drama. And I realized it was all my fault. I let them in. I let them in. Mm. And so that was it for me. What's a, what was a, what's a deal breaker for you? Extending the truth um, or um, uh, maybe lying. Because yeah. I think it's just a, um, a waste of time. And uh, at the end, normally people get hurt. Yeah. So that's a great deal breaker. Mm. And so what you want to do is you want to um, make sure that those deal breakers and your values are in alignment. And what you train your doorman on, your conscious and subconscious mind, is looking for people who have deal breaker behaviors and looking for people who have uh, values that are congruent with yours, that are resonant with yours. They don't have to have the same values. Diversity in so many ways is really important and values are fine. They just can't be incongruent mm. with yours. They can't be dissonant with yours. And so you, you, you look for people who have uh, deal breakers that are intolerable and values that are resonant. And those are the people that you want to let into your life. And that's, that's the core beginning of the concept of who's in your room. Just wondering how these negative people then that want to come into your room and you won't let them in. How do you do that though without sort of ticking them off, making them a bit angry? Look, you distance yourself from negative people and, uh, you know, you draw the line in the sand and you say, th th those actually are not hard. It's not hard to keep them from coming in. The tough ones are the ones that are already in. Mm. That's where it gets tough is how do you deal with them? So here, here's a couple of techniques to use that we talk about in the book and dealing with very negative people. Um, two, two simple techniques. One is uh, homeopathic doses and the second is benign neglect. So let's start with benign neglect. Benign neglect is when you just, over time, neglect a relationship and it dissipates. Um, we probably all have people that we went to high school with or college with that we were good friends. We liked them. They were, we enjoyed them. But through benign neglect, the relationship uh, dissipated over time. Now, imagine doing that with a plan that is, this is not a person I should have ever let into my room. Uh, through benign neglect, I'm going to let this relationship dissipate. And I will use homeopathic doses to do that. Now, the ho homeopathic dose is the minimum dose necessary to treat something. And so let's say you're, let's say I was, I live in Austin, Texas now. Let's say I was headed back to LA and there's somebody in LA because I lived in LA most of my life. Let's say there's somebody there I didn't want to meet. You know, I had a relationship with them. They were toxic. They were in my room. Instead of letting them know a month in advance I'm coming, reach out to them by email the night before and say, hey, I'm going to be in town. If you want to get together, I'm free for about 30 minutes between 1 and 1.30. Mm -hmm. And you throw that out to Adam. That's the, that's the homeopathic dose. And you gradually wean yourself away from that relationship. It's really effective. It works. I, I'm the kind of guy I don't like burning bridges. So I don't want to burn bridges, but I don't want them in my room anymore. Or I, they're in my room. I don't want them in my life anymore. Does this have a major impact on how successful you are, though, in business? No question about it. Mm. Absolutely no question about it. I mean, experts for years have said um, uh, Jim Rohn, uh, uh, Jack Canfield is a good friend, have said you, you, you basically become the five or six people, people you hang out the most with. You become them. If you're hanging out with people that uh, believe in lifelong learning, chances are you believe in lifelong learning or you engage in it. If you, you know, hang out with people that spend the weekend just drinking beer and watching TV, that's who you become. You become the people you hang out with. And so it, it's very important that you surround yourself with people that make you a better version of who you are. Mm. 
Uh, and and honestly, the more you can be, you know, surrounding yourself with people who are even better than you, mm-hmm. maybe even a little smarter, a little more educated, more successful, then it, what it does is it helps you raise the bar for yourself. Mm. You, you know, if you go too far, then you feel like you're an outsider. But, you know, incrementally increase those relationships with whatever it is you view as success or happiness, those are the things you want to look for. Last conversation we had, we talked about um, COVID, pause, reflect, innovate. A lot of stop starts. Uh, The world has become a little bit more uh, uneasy. Uh, Look at Hong Kong. Uh, Although, again, the media does uh, misreport at times, but it's good clickbait. But in this day and age, the pause, reflect, innovate, is there a, a is there a time period where you've got to stop pausing, reflecting, and innovating because it's just going to go on and on and on? Is there another mentality where maybe you need to learn how to survive because, for example, the governments and coronavirus and whatever, it's not going to end tomorrow or next week or in six months' time. It'll be longer, so the world becomes a little less successful. Yeah, so as as you know, I I don't talk politics or religion, uh, and, and we don't in BNI. We really try to separate that. But let me deal with the the issue of just how crazy the world is, because I think most people would say it's pretty crazy right now. Mm. And um, I think the answer to your question is it begins with the right mindset. I really believe that you have to go into whatever challenge you have in life with the right mindset. When I talked about having cancer, my mindset was to surround myself with as much positive as I possibly could. Um, We're dealing with the craziness of today. I think it begins with the right mindset. And that mindset begins with the real belief in hope. We could continue to throw ourselves a pity party. And by the way, I've thrown them for myself. I've had pity parties. And at the end of the pity party, I'm in the same situation and I don't feel any better. So pity parties don't help. I think the right mindset is critical. And I think it begins with hope. Hope is that little voice inside you telling you what can be when everyone around you is yelling what can't be. Hope plus a plan and action help you get through any crisis in life. And that's the message that I'm giving my BNI members and I'm giving to the people I speak to, you have to have the right mindset. It has to begin with hope. You have to create a plan and then you have to take action. I'm a believer in the law of attraction, but you know, even the word attraction, action is part of the word attraction. And so you can attract all this stuff into your life, but if you don't take action, it doesn't matter. But it starts with the mindset. Who's in your room uh, is the book, Ivan Meisner or Dr. Ivan Meisner. Um, Just about to uh, head down to the cellar, a lovely uh, Chardonnay or Pinot, and have a wonderful dinner. Uh, Ivan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Mike. I appreciate it. And anyone who wants information about me, go to ivanmeisner.com. A lot of free content on my blog, and of course, BNI is bni.com.